Hello and welcome to the 11th video in the Project Sovereign series. In this video, I'll create the lifeboats and finish out the detail of the command tower. This ought to be fun, so let's get started. Okay, so I've put in a few more panels and greebles. And now it's time to start on the lifeboats, and I think I figured out a way to do it. So I've made these shapes that are going to be successively booleaned into the hull. And that will allow me to extrude and place materials on them. So I won't need to do them as a texture. I'll be able to do them as modeling because that'll just be ultimately easier in the long run, especially because instead of just having them flat against the hull, I think I want to extrude just so they have a bit of relief and a bit of grooves and a bit more visual interest. So the reason why I chose this method is because, I mean, in places like this and on the bottom of the saucer, these areas are pretty much flat. It's not going to be that big of a deal to Boolean these in, but there's other places on the ship where it's not so flat. And you can see, like this area right here, it's very distorted. So I'm hoping this solution is going to work for this as well, but I'm not sure. If it doesn't, you know, I'll, I'll find another way to, to deal with it. But for now, I think that's going to be for the best. So it's basically just going to be a uh, series of successive booleans in order to create the shape that I need. So let's just give that a shot here. So I'm just going to lower this. Select that. I'll just throw out the symmetry. Pro boolean. Start picking imprint. And there we go. So I could just drop the tool. and just keep doing that. Okay, so that was relatively painless. So as you can see, I've successfully booleaned and extruded the lifeboat areas. I don't know if these are actually raised on the model. It looks like they're painted in, but I kind of like having the extra detail here, so I just decided to extrude them just a little bit so they catch the light, add a bit more visual interest to the model itself. And as you can see, all of these have been cut out too, these areas with the red lines and such. Just so it'll be easier for me to just select them and fill them in with the material. Should make uh, texturing this relatively painless. So I'm going to use this method. It should work for the entire saucer. Hopefully it'll work for the secondary hull as well. If not, again, I could just think of something else. One way or another, we're going to make this work. So very excited to finish up the detailing on the command tower. Just a quick update. As I was putting the lifeboats onto this part of the command tower, I realized I messed up and I forgot to put this notch. See this notch right here? I forgot to put that into the ablative armor plating. So I had to go back and undo that plating and then redo it again. So just a part of the process. I'm sure this is going to be happening a lot more as I work on this model, but that's just the way that it goes. But as you can see, the plating for this part of the command tower is pretty much done. So that's basically it for the modeling for this part. I'm just going to move on to this lower part, maybe get to the shuttle bay area too within this video. So we'll see how that goes, but hopefully uh, that's really going to be the only setback, at least uh, <laughs> for the time being. So the time has come to make these, I'm guessing they're sensor plates. I don't know. I like to sort of invent whatever these little greebles are, invent purposes for them. But anyway, the time has come to create these, and I was wondering how to get this sort of logarithmic, if I can get this steady, logarithmic pattern going on, how they start small, space and they get wider and wider and wider and I couldn't really figure it out until I realized that I could use our friend soft selection over here so I'm just going to select these four that's right these these eight vertices right here and you see the fall off is going all the way down here maybe we can make it go a little bit further there we go and if I squeeze them See how we get that same effect? They start small and they get larger and larger and larger as they go down the line. So coming up with these little solutions, I think is part of the fun of 3D modeling. These solutions to problems that you never know when, when they'll come up. 
But when they do, it's kind of like a puzzle to solve them. So I don't know. I just thought you'd find that interesting. So lots of tweaking and several FFD modifiers later, I was finally able to come up with the shape. So now it's just time to extrude it and put it in place. So that can be achieved by selecting these polygons on top here and then just in setting them and making sure that by polygon is selected and that size looks to be about right to me so I'm just going to go with that and extrude them maybe a bit more just to make sure that everything sticks above you'll see what I mean in a second just going to check that into place and I'll lower this and there we go. I want to make sure it's the same height as these armor plates. So just lower that down. Like so. And it looks like it's raising up a little bit here, or more precisely, this is diving just a little bit. So yet another FFD modifier. And I'll just lower this down. Should well, maybe that's a bit too much. Will raising this help? That looks pretty good. And I'll apply my model material to it. That should be showing up pretty well. render out for just a second yeah that'll be fine and last but not least our friendly symmetry modifier it may not work no it's not working I can see already the axis is off but that's okay because there's more than one way to do things in this program so I'll create a clone. Copy for now. Here, flip that. And just to make sure that it's in the same position, take the X, transform, plug it in here. And there you go. pretty good. Now you'll notice that even though I've created the windows on this part down here and I've applied the symmetry, there's one more stick, one more cutout stick here. And that is because indeed there is one extra window here. So there's little quirks like this all over the model, especially with the windows that I found. So I need to be really careful when I use symmetry just to be sure that I do all the symmetry that I can before these little asymmetries start to manifest in the model that I'm building because I want to do the least work possible and I just want to make sure that I've checked to make sure all these windows, there's a few more like down here, very subtle, but they're there and I want to include them just because it's on the model. So that will do it for this session. Next time, I'm going to start work on the whole main shuttle bay area, including this control tower, I assume that is. And slowly but surely making our way down the saucer section and making our way down through the model. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you soon.